All right, in chapter one, section two, we're gonna be focusing on functions and graphs. So first, to clarify the difference between independent and dependent variables, independent variables are free to change. They're often called the input, and when we list them out, they are our domain values. The dependent variables, the value relies on the input, it is called the output, and it would be listed as all of our range values. Now there are two ways that you can write domain and range. Well, there's a few different ways, but these are the two ways that I prefer. The first way is set builder notation. So the domain would be, assuming we're using X's and Y's, we can use any variable, but just for um, familiarity reasons, we're gonna use X and Y. So this would be read all values of X such that and then we put in our restrictions. I just made this up. I'm saying that it's between three and five. We're including three, and we're not including five. The range would be all values of y, such that, again, made up the restrictions, y is greater than six, and then you close it with the brackets. The other way that I like to do it, and actually I prefer interval notation, uh, separate notation is more formal. It is often found in the answer key in the textbooks. But interval notation, it's quick, it's easy, and uh, I consider that kind of the informal way of doing it. So if you wanted to say that you were not including your first or your last value, you would use parentheses, and then you just have your minimum value, comma, the maximum value. So like in this example up here, if I was going from three to five, not including either, I would do parentheses three, comma, five, close the parentheses. If I wanted to include the values, then I would use these square brackets. So maybe I was going from three to five, including three and five, I would do square bracket, three comma five, square bracket. Uh, if you wanted to do a mix, so maybe you're not including the minimum value, but you are including the maximum, kind of like up here, we're including the min, but we're not including the max. Uh, we can say parentheses, minimum value, comma, maximum value, and then include it. Uh, we also have to use the parentheses whenever we're dealing with negative or positive infinity. Infinity is not a number, it's a concept, and since it's not a concrete number, we can never get to it. So whenever you're using infinity or negative infinity, you would have to use parentheses. So this would be an example of maybe I want something that is less than zero. I would say parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, zero, and then whether I'm including zero or not, since I said less than zero, I would do another parenthesis. If it was less than or equal to, it'd be a square bracket. All right, next up, we just have a few problems that we're gonna be trying in class. So write the domain and range for these four functions, and I'm gonna try to have you do it without a calculator. So the first two might seem a little straightforward. You probably recognize them. The next two, maybe you don't know what they look like or you've forgotten. So we're gonna have a little discussion in class about how we can uh, find the domain and range by just using kind of common sense and deductive reasoning. And then we're gonna take a look at them using Desmos and graphing them. Uh, on your homework, there's gonna be some problems where I'm gonna ask you to try to do it without a calculator just to get the mathematical reasoning down and then some other problems that are more complicated, you can use a calculator. Also in this section, we go over even and odd functions. So the formula for an even function is when you plug in a negative input, you get the original function back as if you were to plug in a positive input. It's also symmetric about the y-axis. An example of that would be this parabola. y equals x squared plus b, b being some y-intercept, and if I were to flip it over the y-axis, it would still be the same image. Odd functions mean that when you plug in the negative of an output, the function you get back is just the negative of the function that you had. So it's symmetric about the origin. So y equals x cubed would be the example for it's symmetric about the origin, because if we were to kind of rotate it, we would have the same function. Now this next one has a lot of writing, so I'm gonna zoom in, but what it is is it's piecewise functions. So starting off with what a piecewise function would look like, y equals, and then I have two comma x is less than negative three, x plus four from negative three to two, looks like we're including both those values, and then the absolute value of x minus three, where x is greater than two, not including. 
Now notice with this piecewise functions, if I am not including negative three and I am including it, that's okay. What wouldn't be okay is if I was including negative three and I was including negative three, that would mean we have some overlap, we have an issue. When graphing it, if you have the less than or greater than, that means that you are not including it, so we would use an open circle in our graph. If it was less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, then that means we are including. Uh, quick recap on piecewise functions. If I just had two, that's the same thing as y equals two. You can see the other ones rewritten. And since my restriction, my constraint says that x is less than negative three, that means I'm only gonna plug in values that are less than negative three. And you can kind of take a moment, just read through what I wrote there. This is all posted online. Absolute value function, there's a quick reminder with a table on how to do the absolute value function. I also did the x plus four. And then the y equals two. Well, that's just a horizontal line. And so then once you have a table of values, you can start to graph. So I did some justifications as to why I have open circles and closed circles, but generally that's what a piecewise function would look like. Uh, and make sure you have arrows on either side if the function goes on forever. So we'll be doing some work with those in class. And then the last thing in this section is the composition of functions. These are kind of cool. That's when an output of one function becomes the input for another function or even itself. So we say it of f of g of x, or you might remember the fog, uh, but that opened circle there between the f and the g is the composition symbol. And I prefer writing it like this. So it shows that you have the f function and what you're plugging into it is the g function or whatever you got for the g function. And here are some problems that we'll try in class. I'm going to give you f of x equals x squared and g of x equals x minus 7. And we're going to find those four. Now the homework for tonight is page 19. Uh, you'll notice those first four problems I'm going to ask you to do without a calculator. Then 18 and 20 are a little more complicated, and then you'll see the rest. All right, good luck.